Hacking in Cyberpunk 2077 can be a little overwhelming at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. In fact, it's actually pretty fun. Dash here and today we're covering everything you need to know about quick hacks. With these tips and tricks, you'll be a quick hacking pro in no time. In this guide, we will cover the different types of quick hacks and how to get them, a breach protocol tutorial, which attributes and passives to spec into, cyberware and cyber decks, how to jack in and why it's important, why crafting is essential for quick hacks, and of course, strategy tips and tricks. By the way, if you haven't already, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. I also stream this game a ton on Twitch, so if you want to catch my cyberpunk streams, be sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash dash please. All right, let's get started. For skills and perks that impact quick hacks, you'll want to spec into these attributes. Technical ability, intelligence, and cool. If you're going for a Netrunner class with a build that focuses on hacking, you'll want to be familiar with both breach protocol and quick hacks. These two perk trees are located under the intelligence attribute. All attributes max out at level 20. If hacking is going to be your main focus, I recommend maxing out intelligence to level 20 first. Specking into intelligence will increase cyber deck RAM capacity, quick hack damage, and quick hack duration each time you level. Once you've maxed out intelligence, you can start specking into technical ability and cool. And depending on your build, you may want to spec into reflexes as well. Technical ability is great for opening locked doors and using tech weapons, but it also pertains to crafting, which we'll cover more in a bit. Specking into cool increases crit damage, stealth damage, resistances, and reduces enemy detection rate each time you level. With cool, you can also access the cold blood passive. Cold blood is something you can use to your advantage to take your hacking to a super saiyan level. Specking into reflexes increases your crit chance each time you level. This impacts cyber decks, an essential element in hacking, which I'll cover more in cyberware and cyber decks. By the way, if you're looking for more info on attributes, perk points, and skills, be sure to check out my guide linked in the description below. There are many types of quick hacks. Some quick hacks may include things like ping, where you can ping all targets by tagging enemies and devices in the area. Distract enemies will cause a device to malfunction and buy you time while an enemy investigates. Reboot optics will make you hidden from an enemy for a short time. Contagion deals damage or poison to enemies and spreads to nearby enemies. Overheat, synapse burnout, and short circuit can be used interchangeably while others are on cooldown to finish an enemy off who's already been affected affected by a previous quick hack. Cyberpsychosis and suicide can be used on tough enemies, usually those with the red skull icon. You can also use this to cause enemies to off themselves or turn on one another. Camera control allows you to take over a camera. You can even swap between different cameras in the area. Turn off remote activation turns off all camera and devices in the area. You can view your quick hacks in your inventory under cyberware. In this menu, you can view all the quick hacks you have access to and can swap them out to fit your preferred playstyle. Remember, the amount of quick slots you have is determined by your cyber deck, so when you're upgrading your cyber deck, the amount of quick slots is a factor you'll want to consider. You can also view available quick hacks if you go into scan mode. You can access this by holding tab on PC. On the left, you'll see a list of all your available quick hacks. In order to initiate a quick hack, you will need RAM. Think of RAM as the cost or battery juice you need to execute your quick hacks. If you're not sure on your RAM stats, in the character screen under health, you'll see your RAM listed as well as your RAM recovery rate, both during and not during combat. Quick hacks can be unlocked, purchased, and even crafted. You can unlock quick hacks by completing missions. For example, you can unlock the ping quick hack by completing a quest called The Gift early on. If you don't want to wait to unlock quick hacks, you can actually buy some from a vendor. 
purchasing some base quick hacks early on can be a great strategy. To do this, you'll need to visit a Netrunner NPC. Look for this icon on your map. I would recommend buying all base quick hacks so you'll have access to them whenever you need. Note that once you acquire these base quick hacks, later on, you'll most likely want to craft your own by upgrading the base versions to the next level tier. And in doing this, you won't need to visit the Netrunner NPC again. If you're looking to craft quick hacks, you'll want to spec into the intelligence attribute. In the quick hacking perk tree, be sure to grab these four passives, which unlock crafting specs for the following quick hacks. Hacker's Manual for Uncommon Quick Hacks. School of Hard Hacks for Rare Quick Hacks. Hacker Overlord for Epic Quick Hacks. Bartmas Legacy for Legendary Quick Hacks. We'll discuss additional passives in just a bit. When you're ready to craft in your menu, under crafting, you will see two tabs, one for crafting and one for upgrades. Under crafting, click on the quick hacks tab on the far right. Make sure you've equipped the quick hack you want to upgrade by clicking cyber deck and selecting it under mods. You must also have the necessary quick hack components listed. You can find these in your backpack under inventory. You can acquire quick hack components by completing breach protocol protocols and uploading demons to access points. You can also upgrade the rarity of your current quick hacks to increase your favorite effects. When you successfully breach protocol, you're hacking all devices and enemies connected to that particular network. Using the ping quick hack will show you which ones are connected and highlight them all so they're easy to spot. You can ping enemies and even cameras, giving you an advantage if you're sneaking by or planning a sneak attack. Look for the icon on devices, near walls, etc. And now for a little tutorial on breach protocol. To breach protocol, you will need to connect to an access point jack in or out, or open a data shard, which you can use if you're interested in lore. Upon doing so, you will see a screen with these four parts. Code matrix, sequence required to upload, buffer, and breach time remaining. The code matrix works sort of like a crossword puzzle that alternates between rows and columns. Sequence required to upload is the possible sequence or sequences you can complete to upload and unlock demons or viruses to the network. Each sequence unlocks a corresponding demon and reward once successfully activated. Rewards include effects, euro dollars, components, or quick hacks. Buffer is how many slots or moves you have to successfully complete the sequence. Breach time remaining is your time left to complete the sequence. Once you understand the Breach Protocol minigame, it can be a lot of fun and give you some great rewards. Starting with the top row, the number letter combination you choose will determine which column you have access to next, followed by the following row, then the following column, etc. Depending on which you're on, you'll be able to move left or right in each row and up or down in each column, but you are locked to that particular row or column during that move. The first letter number combination does not necessarily have to be the first one in a sequence. As long as you complete the sequence in order within the buffer slots you have, you will successfully upload that demon to the access point and receive the corresponding rewards. You can hover over each letter number combination in the sequence to see every time it appears in the code matrix. This can help you plan out your moves in advance, and I recommend doing so since the countdown timer, or breach time remaining, doesn't start until you make your first move. So take as long as you want in this planning stage. Note that the first letter number combination does, however, impact which column you'll have access to next, so pay attention to all the possible options when planning out your moves. Either way, the first letter number combo you choose will take up one buffer slot. Notice each sequence will shift one space once the first buffer slot is filled, even if you haven't started to unlock a sequence yet. As long as you have enough buffer slots to complete the sequence, in order, you're good to go. As you progress through the game, the code matrix will increase and the sequences will become more complicated and harder to complete. This is why additional buffer slots really come in handy. More buffer slots equal more chances at getting all three sequences and more demons unlocked, meaning more euro dollars, etc. You'll start with four buffer slots, but you can get additional slots by upgrading your cyber deck when visiting a ripper dock. You can also craft your own or unlock additional slots by leveling, but keep in mind you'll need to wait until crafting level 19 in Breach Protocol, which may take some time. Any sequences you don't complete, whether you ran out of time, buffer slots, or misclicked, will be marked as failed. 
If you don't see any feasible options between the code matrix and the sequences, you can back out and start over if you do so before you make your first move and activate the countdown timer. Each time you do this, once you start, you will have less time to complete the sequences, but it can sometimes work out in your favor. Or you can always save right before and load that previous save if you fail to initiate a sequence. If you're just starting out or have few buffer slots and can only complete one sequence, go for the bottom one since it has the best rewards. Remember, practice makes perfect. Even early on, if you follow this strategy, you usually can get between one to two sequences, even with only four buffer slots. Once you acquire more or level and unlock passives, you'll have an easier time getting all three sequences, but more on that in a bit. On some devices like a vending machine, laptop or elevator, you may see an option to jack in or use. You can sometimes even hack into people. You may remember doing this at the beginning of your playthrough with the Breaking Through mission where you hacked into Sandra Dorset to read her vitals. Keep in mind, you can actually get hacked by enemy netrunners as well. If you're being hacked, you'll see a notice at the bottom of your screen that says attention overheat. If this happens, make sure to go into scan mode as quickly as possible and look for yellow lines leading you to which enemy or device is hacking you. In this mode, you'll be able to quickly interrupt the attack by counterattacking or by annihilating the threat altogether. If you're going for a full Netrunner build, you'll definitely want to prioritize jacking in so you can acquire resources to upgrade your mods. To upgrade your quick hack ability, you will need to upgrade your cyber deck, which can only be done at a ripper dock. Look for this icon on your map. Other cyberware can benefit quick hacks as well. Frontal Cortex mods, for example, can give different benefits like increasing RAM, RAM recovery upon defeating enemies, and RAM regen bonuses. Other cyberware, like circulatory system mods, may also help with quick hacks. Remember, different types of cyberware may have different requirements and different costs. Some may cost Euro dollars or eddies, while others cost SC or street cred. If being a hacker is your main focus, one huge tip early on is to definitely save your eddies or euro dollars for a good cyber deck. A good cyber deck can give you more RAM or battery juice for more quick hack slots and other hacking bonuses. In Cyberpunk 2077, you're constantly picking up new gear and wearing whatever's giving you more armor and better stats. So don't waste your eddies on gear or a fancy vehicle. Instead, invest in a good cyber deck. When choosing which to purchase, you'll want to focus on these main factors. RAM size, which determines how many quick hacks you could do at a time. Buffer size, which is the amount of moves to complete a sequence in Breach Protocol. And slots, or how many quick hacks you can access and initiate. Remember, quick hacks cost RAM, so make sure to note the RAM in Cyber Decks when making a purchase or upgrade. When it comes to quick hacks and passives, there are a ton you can unlock to give you some great benefits. Of course, you won't be able to unlock them all at once, so take a look at this list and prioritize which ones sound best to you. Remember, when investing your perk points into a skill perk tree, you won't be able to unlock anything higher than the attribute level that perk tree skill falls under. For example, both breach protocol and quick hacking skill perk trees are located under the intelligence attribute. If your intelligence attribute is level 10, you won't be able to invest perk points in any passive higher than level 10. Under the intelligence attribute, you'll want passives in both the protocol and quick hacking skill perk trees. Mass vulnerability and mass vulnerability resistances reduce physical resistance for all enemies. Specking into mass vulnerability quick hacks means any enemy you've breached will take more damage from all your quick hacks. All three of these are great for defense, debuff, and damage increase to each quick hack after a successful breach protocol. Extended network interface automatically highlights nearby access points, while Head Start automatically completes the first sequence in breach protocol. Big Sleep disables all cameras in the network for three minutes or six minutes if you spec into tier two. Datamine Mastermind increases the amount of components acquired from access points by 50% or by 100% if speccing into tier Tier two. Advanced data mine increases the amount of euro dollars acquired from access points by 50% or by 100% if tier 2. Compression is a great one that reduces the length of the sequences required to upload demons in breach protocol. With efficiency, uploading three or more demons in breach protocol increases cyber deck RAM recovery rate. With total recall, ice pick demon reduces all quick hack costs by an additional one RAM. With total recall, Ice Pick Demon also reduces all quick 
Wildcat costs by an additional one RAM. With Cloud Cache, completing breach protocol reduces the RAM cost of the next quick hack. This can make a huge difference when doing multiple quick hacks back to back. iSpy reveals an enemy netrunner when they're attempting to hack you. With Forget Me Not, when you kill an enemy with a quick hack, you get one RAM back. This is great if you're using the Contagion quick hack, because if you insta-kill multiple enemies, you get one RAM back for each kill. Biosynergy allows RAM to be recovered during combat, and is great for long fights when stealth isn't feasible. Bloodware increases quick hack duration. Signal support does more damage and works well with the Contagion quick hack because the damage or poison to nearby enemies lasts longer. Diffusion increases spread distance and also great for Contagion. With Plague, quick hacks that spread can jump to one additional target per each tier. Another great one for Contagion. With Critical Error, Quick Hacks now deal crit hits based on crit chance and crit damage stats. This is a great perk if you've got cyberware or anything with high crit damage, or if you're specking into the Reflex attribute, which increases crit chance every time you level. And Aminsis will prevent RAM from dropping below 2 units, and more if you spec into more tiers. So you should always have at least one Quick Hack you can use, even when others are on cooldown. As mentioned earlier, be sure to unlock these four passives as soon as possible if wanting to craft your own quick hacks. Hacker's Manual, School of Hard Hacks, Hacker Overlord, and Barmus Legacy. Mnemonic reduces cost of additional quick hacks to a target you've already hacked so you can finish him! This comes in handy when you've successfully quick hacked an enemy, but it wasn't enough to kill them. This is great for short circuit and synops burnout quick hacks. With Subliminal Message, quick hacks to unaware targets deal 50% more damage and 100% more at Tier 2. Be sure to crouch and stay out of sight to take full advantage of this perk whenever possible. It's great for stealth. If you ever want to boost your stealth, you can always pick a fight with a group of enemies, kill them, then pick up their bodies one by one and dump them into a car or dumpster with this symbol over it. I've noticed doing this a few times can sometimes boost your stealth. And of course, you're also cleaning up the city and, uh, you know, hiding the evidence. Under the cool attribute, you'll want to spec perk points into both the stealth and cold blood perk trees. Crouching Tiger increases movement speed while crouched or sneaking. Neurotoxin doubles poison damage and is again great for the Contagion Quick Hack. When specking into Cold Blood, killing an enemy increases movement speed and stacks up to 3 times. You can increase the stack even further if you also spec into Unbreakable. Unbreakable increases your stack by 1 for each Cold Blood rank, giving you up to 5 stacks total. With Cold and Calculating, you have a chance of applying a stack of Cold Blood every time you land a crit hit. This is great for Contagion and Cyberware that focuses on crit damage. And it works well with Critical Error also. With Coagulant, Cold Blood stacks fall off one at a time rather than all at once, essentially prolonging its use. It's great if you like the idea of stacking Cold Blood. Frosty Synopsis reduces Quick Hack cooldowns per Cold Blood stack and Quick Transfer reduces Quick Hack upload time per stack of Cold Blood. If you're like me and you want to start off a battle with hacking, but then want to run in and melee enemies, you may want to focus on resistance and armor-based perks as well. Especially if, like me, you're not investing the body attribute and you want to beef up your character a little more for some head-to-head -head combat. Whether you're breaching protocol or unloading quick hacks on enemies, coming up with a good strategy is never a bad idea. Having a plan of attack can give you more control over a fight, give you more flexibility, and will make for an overall stress-free and fun experience the more you do it. Get in the habit of using your scanner to quickly scan enemies and nearby devices as often as you can to detect potential threats or targets of interest. You can scan things pretty far away. And you can even scan while taking over a camera and initiate quick hacks while in this mode. It never hurts to plan ahead, right? Need an example? My order of operations or plan of attack when approaching a fight is something like this. First I scan, maybe turning off cameras or taking them over. I love pinging enemies and devices to see what I have surrounding me. Then I breach protocol and go into our minigame. Then I execute a round of quick hacks. 
Contagion is great when there's a group of enemies. Overheat, Synapse Burnout, and Short Circuit are great for finishing off enemies while Cyberpsychosis and Suicide are great for tough enemies. Once I've done some hacking, I like to toss out some grenades, then run in Rambo style, guns blazing, or slice and dice enemies with my blades. Whichever strategy you come up with, make it your own to fit your personal playstyle, and remember to have fun. And that's it guys, I hope you find this guide helpful. If you did, please give it a like and let me know in the comments below what you learned or what you want to see me do a guide on next. And don't forget to subscribe for more Cyberpunk 2077. If you want to catch me RPing my character live on Twitch, be sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash deshplease. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!